All right, so this is a video on what I think is gonna be the cheapest proper gaming laptop that's gonna come out this year. It is a $670 machine, it's the Acer Nitro 5. This is a device that has traditionally been very inexpensive over the years and people have been very interested in this device because of its price tag. But this year they made some very significant improvements and Let's dig in. Now, I know a lot of you guys are interested in this device, so I'm gonna do this video a little bit differently. I wanna talk about issues that I think, they may not be deal breakers, but they're definitely issues you should be aware of going into this machine. The first thing, well, there's two things, just so you know. The screen, we're gonna talk about that first. Uh, that's kind of like the lesser important one, but then we're gonna talk about the keyboard, and I feel like the keyboard is where it'll make or break your purchase decision. So the screen is a 60 hertz 1080p panel. It's kind of like your standard screen you would expect at this kind of price point. The color accuracy isn't great and it's a 60 hertz panel so you don't get to take full advantage of this kind of performance in the hardware. But I'm okay with that, right? Because it's a $670 machine. My issue is the brightness of the display. So I'm someone that spent most of my gaming hours on laptops. Over the past three or four years, like I'd say 80 to 90% of the games I play are on laptops. And I've noticed that when you're playing shooters, and this is, it, it pertains mostly to shooters, but if you have a dim screen, it's actually hard to track people. I, I don't know what it is, but I feel like I need a certain amount of brightness and contrast to be able to see enemies as clearly as possible. I feel like with this screen, because it's a little bit dimmer, it's not ideal. Now, I can forgive it because of its price tag, but it is something you should be aware of. Now, the second thing is the keyboard. And this is where I feel like a big part of this conversation needs to happen. This keyboard is the same as last year's keyboard, the 2019 model, and just like that one, I find it uncomfortable for gaming. Now, I don't think everyone will, but I'll try to explain why I don't like it. I find that the WASD keys are so close to the left side of this laptop that your hand is forced into this weird position to be able to use them. Now, I don't have giant hands, right? I have what I would think are average sized hands, but even I found it quite difficult to use those keys and also hit shift and whatever buttons you would normally press when you're playing any kind of WASD based game. Like I've seen a lot of tight keyboard layouts on this channel, right? The G5 SC comes to mind, the Legion 5, they're all keyboards that have numerical pads, so everything's shifted over, but this is the tightest one. Like this is shorter by like half a centimeter, which doesn't seem like a lot, right? Five millimeters, how is that, you know, why are we even talking about five millimeters? But when you place your wrist on this thing, it feels tight. It doesn't feel like a normal keyboard. Just putting it out there in case you're interested in this device. And here's the thing, if you're buying this, this is probably gonna be your input device, right? Not a lot of people plug up external keyboards when it comes to this kind of price point, so just so you're aware. The other thing is the trackpad. It is really shifted over to the left, not just because of the 10 keys, like oftentimes laptop companies will shift stuff over because of numerical pads, but this isn't even centered to the actual typing area. It is very far over to the left, so you might need to disable it for games, but the actual trackpad experience is fine. It's a plastic surface, but it feels accurate and responsive enough. At this point, you might think that this is you know, I hate this laptop. I really don't. I like it, but those two things, the keyboard and the screen, you just, before you buy it, look at this review, look at, you know, the positioning of my hands in the videos and just see, is this gonna affect you? Is this something that will bother you? Because it bothered me. Okay, uh, the performance on this machine is excellent, like weirdly good. The six core Ryzen CPU and the GTX 1650 push out really nice numbers for this kind of price point, and the thermal performance is good. These chips aren't super hot, but there's a ton of thermal headroom. This thing can definitely cool the higher configurations effectively. Now, whether or not you wanna get those is another conversation, uh, but at the base model, like the $670 unit, it handles the heat like no problem. There is really nice fan control in the software, but even the default settings will be able to cool the system properly. Now, inside, you have access to your two NVMe drive slots, your one SATA base, you have three drives in total, and you also have access to your two RAM slots. Now, only one is populated, so you're running in single channel. Depending on what you do, it can make a pretty big difference to have the second slot populated, so you're running in dual channel, uh, but you can upgrade that over time. And your battery down here is small. It's a 48 watt hour battery. I got three hours, slightly less than three hours of battery life, but at this price point, it's, again, to be expected. But you can see at the top, the thermal system this year is on point. It's just so much better than the previous generations. Uh, speakers, let's not talk about them. All right, 
Let's move on to ports. This machine has a good selection of ports. Ethernet jack, three USB A's, one USB C, doesn't support Thunderbolt 3, but the AC adapter socket is in the back of the device. So it kind of keeps those cables away from you, which is nice. It is in this piece of red plastic. I wish they just made this black, right? It just would have looked a little bit cleaner, but at least you can tell the world just how gamer you really are with that red piece of plastic. Now, I like this machine. There's so much that is done right on this machine, but the screen and keyboard deficiencies shouldn't be ignored. I don't think they're deal breakers, but I think you should be aware of them if you're interested in this machine, particularly if you have big hands or if you play competitive shooters for the screen. Now, I wanna close off this conversation with, uh, you know, should you buy it? Should you actually spend $670 to pick up this machine? Because it's not like this is the only machine in the world that's inexpensive. So here's my take on it, based on the stuff that I've seen in terms of what's available and what I've reviewed. This machine is best at its base model. The moment you upgrade this thing to higher configurations, I feel like there's other devices out there that are more competitive in terms of price to performance ratio. The advantage of this thing is really its price point. 670 bucks, you can't beat this in terms of like anything. You can't get a cheaper machine with this kind of performance. But the moment you upgrade it and get higher configurations, I would start looking at like the Dell G5 SE or some Legion devices, some older ones, because at that price point, this starts to lose its advantage, right? The, you're stuck with that keyboard and you're gonna be stuck with kind of inferior screens. So yeah, that's the Acer Nitro 5. Now here's another thing I wanna mention. This is from a company that makes a ton of gaming laptops. Acer has like the Nitro 5, Nitro 7, the Triton 300, Triton 500, maybe not the 500, that's expensive, but they also have the Helios line, the Helios 300. These are all like super, similar in price point, like from like, you know, 700 to a thousand dollars. And that's a pretty big spread now that I mention it. But the point I'm trying to make is that Acer has a ton of like mid tier, mid priced gaming laptops. And so when you have a machine like this, that sits in that kind of lineup, you have to make sure that your cheapest model isn't too good, right? Or else no one's going to buy the more expensive machines. Everyone's just going to buy that perfect $700 gaming laptop, but they don't want that. They can't have that. So you have to put stuff like, you know, red accents in here so it doesn't look too good. And you have to have imperfections in the device because that's just, that's just the nature of business. You would do the same thing. Okay, so that's the Acer Nitro 5. I think it's a great machine. Just be aware of its quirks when you're going into it. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.